Respected dignitaries, invitees, HODs, and coordinators of various departments, electronic and print media persons, staffs, and all the participants, a pleasant good morning to one and all. Myself, Chinna Vigauder, Assistant Professor in EC Department, feels an immense pleasure to welcome you all for inaugural function of NAC sponsored two days national level webinar on academic and administrative audit organized by RYMEC Ballari in association with IQAC. Let us begin this pleasant morning with Ganesha Sloka, Vakratunda Mahakaya Koti Surya Samaprabha, Nirvignam Kurme Deva Sarva Kareshu Sarvatta. I request Dr. Virgangadhar Swami, IQSC convener, to welcome the gathering. Thank you, madam. I take this uh, privilege to welcome uh, all the dignitaries and participants to this uh, today's festival of uh, NAC sponsored academic and administrative audit uh, process webinar. I welcome uh, our uh, management uh, uh, president, Sri HM Gursiddha Swami sir, uh, President Virasha Vidyavardhak Sanga to this uh, webinar. I also welcome Sri Alam Chanapa sir, Vice President Virasha Vidyavardhak Sanga, Ballari, and Chairman Rao Bahadur Vai Mahabalish of Engineering College, Ballari. I welcome Sri B. Basrat sir, Secretary, Virashava Devadak Sangha, Bulani. Also welcome J. Shantviran Gauda sir, Assistant Secretary, Virashava Devadak Sangha, Bulani. I welcome Sri Gonal Rashayakar Gauda sir, Treasurer, Virashava Devadak Sangha, Bulani. I welcome uh, today's uh, uh, President, Dr. T. Anmantradi sir, Principal, Prabhupada Vahi Mahabalishwa Indian College. Uh, chairman, uh, I welcome Chairman Sir for this uh, function. Also welcomes uh, uh, Dr. T. Anmatadi Sir, Principal, Rao Badr Ruhai Mahabalish Engineering College, Pallari. I welcome Vice Principal, uh, Dr. Savita Sonali Madam, uh, HOD, ENC Department to this uh, function. I welcome you, Madam. Also welcome uh, Dr. H. Girish, uh, uh, Dean Academic, uh, Rao Badruhai Mahabalish Punjian College, Ballari. Also welcome coordinator, Dr. Manjunath, uh, Associate Professor, Mechanical, to this function. Also welcome uh, B. Shripati, uh, Dean Examination, uh, RYMEC, Ballari, to this function. I welcome uh, today's uh, prominent uh, guest. Uh, we have prominent uh, guest today, uh, Dr. Uh, K. N. Subramanya, sir. Uh, principal <laughs> Arvi Engineering College, uh, Bangalore, to this uh, function. Also welcome <laughs> K. R. Vishnu Maharaj. Why so? I welcome uh, uh, today's prominent guest, Dr. K. N. Subramanian, sir, Principal, RBCE, Bangalore. Namaskar I welcome sir. Dr. Namaskar K. N. Sir. Namaskar, sir. Dr. K. N. Vishnumaya, sir, uh, Assistant Advisor, NAC, Bangalore, to this function. Namaste. I welcome. Namaste. Good morning to all. Good morning, sir. Sir, so, I welcome uh, research persons uh, of uh, today and tomorrow, uh, Dr. Kanmani B., Professor, HOD Department of ETE, BMSE, Bangalore, to this function. I also welcome Dr. R.C. Iremat, Farmer Principal, KLE, Nijlingapa College, Bangalore. I also welcome Dr. G.M. Madhu, Professor and IUKC Director, Ramaya Institute of Technology, Bangalore. I welcome Dr. D.K. Kamli, sir, Assistant Advisor, NAC, Bangalore, to this function. 
also welcome all the head of the departments staff teaching and non teaching members of rao bahadur wai mahabaleshwar engineering college also welcome all the participants uh, who are very keen to this uh, webinar uh, the participants are from karnataka delhi bombay Anta. odisha yeah. tamil nadu yeah. and yeah. also karnataka and also welcome present media and also welcome our technical team members uh, professor uh, uh, shivkeshi and shiv prasad and other members also welcome our uh, uh, other members of the staff who are taking care of this webinar so this is a, a two days webinar sponsored by nac uh, in the intention of uh, giving quality in uh, education and quality comes with uh, audit like we are going to have audit of academic and administrative audit where we are going to find uh, actual tuning parameters where to tune to get the quality i really thank nac uh, for sponsoring uh, this webinar to uh, go for the audit and get quality parameters once again i thank you all for coming and uh, participating in this uh, two days webinar thank you thank you anand Deepak Jyoti Parabrahma, Deepak Jyoti Janardana. On this occasion, I request all the dignitaries to light the lamp and spread the flames of knowledge. Now I request Dr. Manjira Kondekal, Associate Professor, Mechanical Department, to introduce our chief guest and speaker, Dr. K N Subramanya, Principal, R V College of Engineering, Bangalore. So good morning, dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. Myself, Dr. Manjunath Kondekkel, Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, RMC Bullari. I'd like to introduce our chief guest, Dr. K. N. Subramaniam, currently working as principal, RV College of Engineering, Bengaluru. He did his BE in Industrial and Production Engineering, M. Tech in Industrial Management, MBA with HR Specialization, and PhD in Supply Chain Management. Did NPTEL online courses on leadership education and academic leadership program of Oxford University UK. Has 29 years of experience in teaching, training, and consultancy, research and administration. Academic and research expertise includes operations management, supply chain, logistics management, e enterprise modeling, simulation modeling, and analysis. Decision science. He guided more than 100 UG and PG projects 
actively involved in research and guiding uh, four research scholars published 46 technical papers in a referred national and international journals and presented 81 technical papers in national and international conferences executed several uh, funded projects consultancy assignments and coordinating the projects and consultancy worth more than 20 crores at the institution level since three years authored chapters in nine books guided three research scholars two from vtu one from jane university guiding three research scholars under vtu belgam established a center of excellency in micro electronics internet of things automotive mechatronics smart antenna systems e-mobility cctv research center and incubation center at the college level instrumental in uh, signing moes with over uh, 90 companies in india and three universities in abroad for joint collaborations he is member of various committees both at the national and state level serving as a member in professional societies for collaborative works and networking thank you sir I request Dr. K. N. Subramanya sir to give a keynote speech. Please, sir, over to you. Hello, uh, Namaskara. Good morning to all of you. I hope I am audible. I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay, Please go fine. ahead. Okay. Uh, so, uh, very happy to be here this morning uh, to inaugurate uh, a very good uh, function on academic and examination audit, uh, which is a very, very important and essential feature of all of the quality assurance and the accreditation process. Either it is uh, the NAC, NBA, or any kind of a ranking uh, when we go uh, for an institution, all these things become very, very important. Uh, quality actually is a very, very important term. And uh, I'd like to give uh, an example of a quality. Uh, I will start with that uh, so that you can important, you will know that how important quality is. An American company uh, placed an order for 1 million bearings with a Japanese company, I mean, with an another American company. And uh, they told you can have 10 defects out of 1 million of the bearings. And that American company told that uh, 10 defects is a very stringent standard, very, very stringent standard. Uh, uh, for us to meet the quality. Then uh, the same order was placed from an uh, uh, American company to a Japanese company. So when they went for that, a Japanese company told that, okay, is it only 10 defects out of 1 million? Okay, we can make it and give it to you. So there is no problem at all. Then when they made uh, this 1 million components, they sent it 1 million components as well as uh, they had uh, packed separately 10 defects and sent it to them. And they told uh, this company that uh, since you're asking for a defect, we are giving it. Otherwise, we can make all 1 lakh or 1 million uh, uh, bearings correctly. I think that is how uh, the quality has emerged after the Second World War. In fact, uh, when the whole world after the Second World War focused on the securing their borders, it is only Japan who tried to focus on the quality because Japan is not having too much of natural resources. So then what they brought a concept of a zero defect and all the quality issues. In fact, uh, you should know that the quality gurus in the world are Juran and uh, uh, Demings. In fact, the Demings principle, Deming himself could not do that in America, but first he did it in uh, Japan. And in fact, you should also know that uh, before visiting uh, Japan, Deming had come to India and uh, during that time, he came to Indian Statistical Institute. Institute, And uh, here what happened is uh, we were all still enjoying independence. And when Deming told, I'm going to see that your country does a very good quality kind of things, nobody even looked into it. So then he immediately went to Japan and uh, uh, they got into a concept of PDCA cycle, plan, do, check, act cycle. And that's how quality origin has happened. And even today you talk about quality, people talk about uh, Japanese products. In fact, much before the World War, Japanese quality was not all known. Actually, it was not known for quality at all. So that's the way quality has emerged over a period of time. But slowly it has percolated into even all the areas of business and also to the education at later point of time. So uh, auditing is uh, one activity according to me. Uh, we should not worry too much about the auditing because as long as your process is right, 
in whatever we do automatically you'll get a good score in the auditing but problem is uh, we do a lot of post mortem report uh, when once all the process is completed then we start looking into the audit and if we get a less marks in that then we start working backwards say how to improve the process actually uh, you should uh, your process should be so thorough that uh, automatically audit should be taken care i think this is one message i would like to convey to all of you because uh, quality is defined in different terms over from 1950 onwards before it was called as a quality was uh, meeting the specification then it was called as a quality is uh, uh, meeting the functional requirements then came in 1970s and 88 uh, a quality is a, a customer i mean meeting the customer requirement or customer satisfaction then came the word uh, a customer delight in fact we are in this zone of customer delight now whatever you give to the customer today they ask much more so in the sense you take a mobile phone for example the kind of features a mobile phone gives i don't know which other product gives such a kind of features so today any product or a service there should be a delight so in the same parlance actually if you take the education institution also we should try to look into it when a student is joining a college because student is uh, not an external customer he is an internal customer as all of you should be knowing education comes under the service sector so in a service sector customer becomes a part of the process so that's how he is an internal customer an external customer to an institution is the higher education institutions the companies the entrepreneurship activity whatever a student takes so those are all external customers but one of the internal customer who is a part of a process is the student so when student joins the college till the end of four years how we how is he satisfied so is he first of all satisfied delight is the next day meeting delight is not so easy so is he satisfied studying in a college getting all the infrastructure getting the academics whatever he wants whatever he wants to pursue his passion are we providing facilities to all those things and at the end of the fourth year has he got a good placement or uh, is he pursuing passion of an entrepreneurship or did he get a good uh, let us say a post graduation degree in some other place so these are all some of the things which you have to look into so that's how a quality is totally a journey and uh, in parallel with the education how we are taking care of our students and trying to meet is the overall perspective of the quality actually so uh, in order to meet all these things we have an accreditation process we have an auditing process these are all the processes under a quality assurance so i feel uh, uh, as uh, the important stakeholders being the management and the faculty members are we providing all such facilities to my internal customer uh, and uh, easy learning is the total learning is good when he is in the campus is the one which we had to question i'm sure in all these five days will i i saw all the topics which are given but uh, by and large we look into the process driven what is the formula what is the table so i data driven things are most important but before that the process driven are we having or not is very very important if the process is right automatically data will be generated but if the process is not right still i can generate a data but uh, i would not have met the outcome for a student so let us keep in mind uh, the process driven along with the data driven that is what will be helpful for the auditing either is academic auditing or the examination auditing in fact i am going to throw some light uh, maybe in my speech that uh, i have not be focusing more on the what formats to be prepared and things of that sort i want to open up all the fac i am sure the faculty members are there here the majority of the participants i would like to throw some light on uh, our thinking process itself or on the mindset what a faculty are to have in order to provide a good quality education good quality technical education so uh, this is the overall perspective uh, which you have to look into when you talk about a higher education in the country uh, i will be talking more about all these things once again uh, i am very happy to be a part of this and uh, i thank all the people who are involved in inviting me for this uh, to whatever little little knowledge i have i'd like to share in my uh, one and a half hour lecture after this inauguration once again thanking all of you the management the principal iqac coordinator and all the people who are involved in the uh, inviting me for this inaugural function ellarigu namaskara once again thank you very much for inviting me here thank you thank you sir i request mrs sanita is the department to introduce today's chief guest dr k r vishnu mahesh assistant advisor nac council bangalore
good morning dignitaries on the dais and off the dais i like to introduce our chief guest dr k r vishnu mahesh uh, assistant advisor in national Assess assessment and accreditation council bangalore an autonomous institute of the university grants he is a member of various statutory committees both at the national and the state level he is also serving as a member in professional society for collaborative works and networking he has completed his post graduation and doctoral degree in industrial chemistry from kuwampu university shumoga after which he worked as assistant professor around 8 years and prestigious engineering institutions like rv college of engineering acs college of engineering and dayanand sagar college of engineering bangalore he joined as assistant advisor in nac bangalore he has published more than 70 research articles in reputed international journals he has presented his research paper on polymer nano composite and electrochemistry in various national and international conference where some of his work has been rewarded with the best paper award in thailand and malaysia etc he has also authored books and book chapters on vinylester based polymer nano composites he has received many awards like aniketana gold medal university level best nss volunteer for social service in his college days he is the editorial member of many scientist scientist journals including the prestigious journals like elsewhere etc he is a lifetime member of many professional bodies in india and abroad and also he was an organizing member of many national and international conferences thank you sir i request dr k r vishnu mahesh sir to give a keynote speech please sir thank over to you thank you thank you very much i think i am audible to everyone yes sir you are audible good morning to one and all present in this uh, two days uh, national level uh, webinar on academic administrative audit first uh, i want to convey uh, our uh, director uh, professor s c sharma sir director nag he's conveyed his best wishes and congratulations to the organizing team to take a, in a very good initiative to organize uh, this uh, academic administrative audit webinar thank you sir uh, uh, today's uh, guest uh, subramanya sir is my uh, beloved teacher and uh, the principal of uh, the rao bahadur engineering college iqc coordinator first i uh, if I, i would like to congratulate and uh, the uh, very good initiative taken Uh, from the iqsc to organize uh, such a very important webinar because uh, today uh, all the colleges are doing a very good job but they are failing uh, in the documentation part they are failing in the accountability of their work so to give an idea how to uh, audit what are all the things you done in the college and accountability so this webinar give a very good glimpses to the uh, uh, educationist and all the uh, researchers how to document and audit the process because this is a very important uh, uh, practice in the quality culture of an education institution see if you want to go for an uh, iso certification nba nirf ranking or nac accreditation your documentation plays a very important role while getting a, a good grade and the accreditation from the agency because so after the um, audit you will get an idea where you are lagging so what are all the internal areas you have to be improved and also which area you have to focus internal areas of distribution of resources and also the internal areas of distribution of the human means human uh, resources so this is very important and also you can set a short term goals long term goals so you can achieve uh, uh, the goals for the best uh, quality uh, uh, culture in your institution so today 
uh, as a uh, person from the NAC accreditation agency, just I want to uh, give a uh, idea about assessment accreditation. So what are all the things we are asking in the NAC assessment accreditation? Because uh, the IQSC coordinator yesterday called me, he requested, sir, while you are uh, uh, invited talk, so kindly explain the NAC assessment accreditation process so that our participants will also get an idea. So which are the areas we have to focus for the assessment accreditation area. Uh, so just I am sharing my PowerPoint presentation. So NAC assessment accreditation. So what are all the documentations are required? So how to present during the accreditation process? Uh, I request uh, uh, the host to kindly give me uh, uh, the sharing option. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One second. That's you. ಅಸೆಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ರಿಟೇಷನ್ accreditation you will get an idea about the swac analysis of your institution because where your strength is there where is your weakness is there opportunities where to improve and challenges what are all the things you are facing in your organization so that uh, self analysis will be uh, 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 get an idea after the assessment and accreditation and also identification of the internal areas and planning of resource allocation because sometimes what happens only one or two departments will be more focused but some other departments will be neglected so uh, after the assessment accreditation process or an academic administrative audit process you will get an idea to distribute the internal areas of planning and resource allocation and also especially initiation of innovative and modern methodology of pedagogy because nowadays the world is growing like a um, a technical oriented so teaching in a using a teaching learning methodologies using online tools a special type of softwares so these are the things when accreditation lot of questionnaires will be asked in the accreditation automatically your institution will tell get an idea so where to focus on the initiation especially for modern methods of teaching coming to the other important benefits of accreditation is the funding agencies look for the performance see for example institution is getting a, a very good grades and scores automatically the funding agency will also give a very good fundings to the institution to improve further and also intra institutional interaction you can collaborate with the other uh, uh, good institution for the betterment and in a, in such areas like research and other academic purpose and also say for example a student when he want to join a good college so he he is looking for the other uh, accreditation and other certification of the institution for example institution is accredited with nba accredited with nac iso so automatically students will also attract to join that such type of institution and also after the accreditation process you will get a, a very good sense of direction and identity in the uh, society and also uh, mainly the employers also looking for the uh, colleges with accredited institution for example top uh, uh, companies like infosys isro and other international companies also uh, uh, looking for the a uh, good accredited institutions uh, students for their um, company so like that there are several varieties of benefits are there for example a student is want to complete uh, an undergraduate student in the country in india so for example he completed ba bsc bcom 3 years undergraduate so suppose he want to join a uh, post graduate course in uh, america so our degree is not eligible because the four years undergraduate should be uh, completed to join a post graduation so in that condition so nac is an uh, uh, member of international quality assurance bodies so according to that agreement if the student is accredited from a institution so automatically that 3 years undergraduate will also be considered as 4 years undergraduate he is eligible to join a post graduation in usa and other european countries so so there are several benefits of accreditation uh, to the institution and also for the um, students 
so uh, coming to our uh, assessment accreditation methodology so previously we are also following the conventional method so the college is uh, uh, supposed to submit all the hard copies documentation through the uh, post but now in the revised accreditation framework we launched in uh, july 2017 so this is a purely computerized ict driven scalability robust and objective transparent outcome oriented especially the stakeholders friendly uh, the process is launched in the july 2017 here the number of questions are reduced the report size is re reduced and also the visit uh, size is uh, reduced so here the quantitative uh, and qualitative type of questionnaires we are asking in the um, uh, self study report and also coming to the uh, student satisfaction survey uh, this is also purely online based student satisfaction survey this is the first of its kind in the world we are collecting the direct feedback from the students and also the system generated scores by the combination of data validation verification especially this data validation verification is a third party evaluation as uh, so a blind peer review uh, data validation verification will also happen to give a, a pure uh, uh, fair justice to the institution and also previously uh, all the colleges who are all applying for the assessment accreditation we are sending the peer team members for the peer team visit but now there is a you know, pre qualifier stage is there before uh, a peer team visit the institution should score at least 25% of the system generated score so then only they are eligible for the peer team visit so like that uh, the revised accreditation framework is changed in the july 2017 now you can observe this is the online assessment accreditation flow chart so first the institution should register their credentials in the nac website so we will provide the login id and credential through the online process purely paperless so you have to scan your document you have to upload in the portal so iqa Uh, applications will be there this is a pre preliminary application so after that the 45 days time will be there you have to submit the self study report the quantitative and qualitative metrics will be there so according to that metric so every documents supporting documents additional documents data templates you have to submit so after that uh, the data validation verification will uh, uh, there so here your documents will be verified and validated so after that so along with that student satisfaction survey will also happen the students will get the email of the link of the student satisfaction survey automatically students can can give uh, their survey you know, through the online as a, uh, uh, in the portal so after that the peer team visit will be happens then the declaration of the grade so like this the uh, online assessment accreditation flow will be completed so coming to some of the important guidelines to fill up the ssr every metric we provided the tool tips upload button options and also the data field should be contextualized with the related metric and also the upload limit of 5 mb is given for every metric more than 5 mb you can upload it in your college website so that link you can provide during the ssr submission so especially we are asking the four uh, different uh, types of year wise data so for example any data means documents pertaining to the financial year for example audit report so financial other things so 1st april to 31st march that is the financial year data you have to give coming to the publication related data uh, uh, journal publication book publication or a, a patent publication like that all the related to the research so january 1st to 31st december that is called as <coughs> calendar data you have to submit during the ssr so coming to the other metrics so academic year data will be there academic year means normally according to nac nomenclature 1st june to may 31st we are asking the data of academic year so the institutions can, can give the academic year data after the completion of the all the semester results so that is the completion of the academic year you can give the data coming to the current year data current year means according to nac the last completed academic year will be your current year so likewise we are asking the data in the nac assessment accreditation process coming to the ssr submission readiness 
understanding the metrics is very important because nowadays uh, uh, we are seeing the institutions are not understanding properly some of the institutions are not even aware about the programs and courses what is course what is program so because of this, uh, uh, this uh, lack of understanding they are failing to get a, a fair justice in the assessment accreditation process so kindly go through the nac guidelines manuals and standard operating procedure based on that standard operating procedure only you have to give the documents for example how many classrooms are geo uh, how many classrooms are ict enabled so need not to submit any bills of computer or a lcd or anything only submit the geo tagged photo of the classroom so that is the according to the standard operating procedure and also upload all relevant documents so, so kindly avoid the irrelevant documents during the submission of ssr because we divided quantitative metrics and qualitative metrics quantitative metrics is purely data based metrics so you have to give a data numbers and supporting document but in qualitative metrics so we are providing a 500 words uh, capacity in that you, each qualitative metrics you can describe your qualitative metrics so, and according to that supporting documents also you can upload so that will be verified by the peer team member through on site visit in the institution so this uh, all dbv clarification and verification will be based on the standard operating procedure so kindly follow the standard operating procedure so coming to the other important metrics so how we are asking in the different kinds so for example first kind we are asking the year wise data for last of a year so for example how many phds are there how many students are admitted so year wise you have to give the data so coming to the block year data so we are asking total five year data how many uh, uh, courses or programs or uh, cbsc accredited system is there so total five year you have to give a whole data so like that the different kinds of questions we are asking in the uh, uh, ssr for example some questions are only option based questions so question is there just you have to tick the option see for example uh, uh, the institution having this following e-journals, e-shows in the uh, book, e-books, database. If you're having all, you can click all the above. If you're having only one, one of the above. Like that, you have to click the option. Coming to the fourth kind of uh, question. So it seeks the data of the latest completed academic year data. Means last, means current academic year, latest completed academic year data. So for example, how many students are undertaking the project work, field work? So that time, the final year student, means are the second third semester students also if they are conducted the project work so you can give that uh, data during the ssr filling coming to the fifth kind so here we are not asking any data in the uh, ssr but in the extended profile only we are taking the data of the college for example t student teacher ratio so how many students are there how many teachers are there? automatically it will calculate the student teacher ratio so like that the different varieties of uh, questionnaires we are asking in the ssr coming to the timeline so previously uh, nac assessment accreditation so throughout the year anytime you can apply now also same you can apply anytime but after applying the iaqea so there is a fixed timeline will be there so you have to submit within 45 days that is the ssr so dvv or student satisfaction survey within 30 days you have to complete so after the pre qualification within 30 to 60 days you have to take the peer team visit so after that within 30 days your result will be coming so like this there is a fixed timeline will be there in the assessment accreditation process but due to the covid 19 or due to the natural calamities or examination burn uh, some uh, conditions there will be a uh, slight uh, um, uh, uh, time will be given uh, by the approval of the competent data. So like mm -hmm. that, uh, the NAC assessment accreditation process is there. Coming to the um, support help desk, during the assessment accreditation process, yeah, if you're having any doubt, need not to worry. We created a, a unique feature in the portal that is support bar help tab. You can raise your query. Immediately within 24 hours, our NAC uh, uh, peoples will reply your queries. So if still your query is not solved, need not to worry. You can uh, call to the NAC help desk, dedicated help desk from morning 9 to 5 o'clock. And also 
uh, the email will be there. You can uh, write your email queries. So we will ready to answer your queries. So like that, the NAC assessment accreditation is there. Uh, so within 10, 15 minutes, uh, I, th I don't know uh, how much I explain uh, to understand about the NAC assessment accreditation process because the quality is an invest, not an investment. It is an um, like a together invest on the quality of higher education to uh, get a very good quality in the higher education. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for the organizer to give an opportunity to explain about the NAC assessment accreditation in this uh, uh, two days uh, national level uh, uh, webinar on academic administrative audit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Vishnu, sir. Uh, our, our principal, sir, uh, likes to. Uh, Sir good, morning, sir. sir, good morning. Sir, good morning. Sir, we have a small query that. Sir, please, sir, please, sir. We are, we are accredited with the B plus plus grade now. Yeah. We we want to go to the pre visit. Early early visit. Uh, better grade. Uh, is it hard to do? Yes, yes. Not audible. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, we have another special invitee, Mr. Srinivas Ballari, Vice President, TD Bank, USA and Distinguished uh, Alumni. On behalf of our institution, we wel welcome you, sir. Sir could not uh, connect because of his busy uh, schedule and emergency work. I request Dr. Savita Sonali, Vice Principal, RVMC Ballari, to address the gathering. Please, ma'am. respected dignitaries on the dais and all the dignitaries who have joined us online and all the members of this webinar, a warm good morning to one and all. So today, as you all know, we have gathered here for a NAC sponsored two days national level webinar on academic and administrative audit. So I uh, wholeheartedly thank NAC for uh, sponsoring this uh, two days academic and administrative audit. Thank you, sir. And uh, as uh, our uh, RYMEC college, we are going for uh, NAC visit in the month of December 2021. And uh, our CSE department is accredited twice. And EC, mechanical and civil departments are going for NBA and we are waiting for the NBA dates. And I am sure, sir, this two days webinar will is really going to help all the participants who have joined for today's webinar. So on this occasion, I wholeheartedly thank our resource persons, Dr. G.M. Madhu, Dr. D.K. Kamle, Dr. R.C. Hiremat, Dr. K.N. Subramaniam, sir, and Dr. K.R. Vishnu Mahesh, sir, and Dr. Kanmani B. So we had a lot of collaboration with the Kanmani, madam, uh, while establishing NI LabVIEW uh, laboratories. So we are really uh, happy to have all these resource persons. So, and our uh, today's a special invitee, Mr. Srinivas Ballari. He's an alumni of uh, RYMEC and sir is from Dallas, USA and very good uh, orator also. So on this occasion, I congratulate our IQSC convener, Dr. Veer Gangadhar Swami sir and uh, event coordinator, Dr. Manjunath Kondekal sir and the entire IQSC team for organizing this uh, today's webinar. Uh, and also it's uh, very important that I would like to note on this occasion all the resource persons are excellent and highly experienced resource persons are there for this today's section. And I'm sure all the participants will uh, take the best uh, use of this event. So on this occasion, uh, our management has always supported in organizing such webinars and our principal sir, Dr. T. Hanman Reddy sir, and our chairman sir, Shri Allam Chanapa sir, are always the backbone of such events. So I'm sure this two days webinar is going to help 
all the participants to uh, get accreditation details regarding NAC and NBA and also administrative and academic audit. Thank you one and all for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, madam. Now I request Dr. Hanman Reddy, Principal RYMEC Ballari to address the gathering. Yes. Very warm uh, uh, good morning to all uh, who have uh, participated and uh, attending this uh, academic and administrative audit organized by IQAC cell of RY Mr. Ballari with uh, sponsorship of, from NAC. Uh, very warm good morning and I'll welcome you on behalf of institution for uh, uh, two days uh, talk. And, uh, national level webinar on a very important uh, topic of uh, NAC and uh, NBA uh, process. Uh, President of Vishwa Vidyarthi Sangha, Gursu Swami sir, and Vice President and our Honorable Chairman, Allam Tanapa sir, Secretary and former Chairman of RYMC, Sri B.V. Basura sir, and uh, Treasurer uh, and uh, uh, present uh, Chairman of SK Modi's School, Gonal Rashikir Goda, sir, and Assistant Secretary and Chairman of Virshav College, uh, J. Shantuviran Gaud, or uh, Darur uh, Shantan Goda, sir. Uh, sir, uh, Dr. K. N. Uh, Subramanam, sir. Subramanam, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I think you will remember you have visited our institution as uh, VTU LIC Chairman. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I visited. Yeah. I remember. Thank sir, you. Remember. Thank you for valuable inputs that you have given on that day and also in uh, today's talk. Sir, I'm very much impressed on your word called quality delight. Yeah, yeah I think that is apt uh, for today's uh, service sector or any customer sector. The delight is the a word or the satisfaction one should reach. Thank you, sir, for, for giving. Uh, a very valuable input. I think I look forward to attend your next session also. Thank you, Thank you for coming and delivering a talk. Though you were very busy, I know that, uh, but still you have uh, agreed uh, to, to deliver a talk. Thank you, sir. Thank you on behalf of institution. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, Dr. K. R. Vishnu Mahesh, sir. Uh, good morning. Vishnu Mahesh, sir. Good morning. Sir, thank you for giving your online uh, NAC uh, accreditation process now uh, that uh, how to get the student feedback or how to submit SSR, how to submit uh, IAQR. Uh, thank you for giving a valuable input. Uh, uh, we will follow your guidelines uh, to, to apply our NAC uh, next uh, second cycle of uh, NAC accreditation process that we are looking in the next uh, visit. Uh, Madam and uh, Vice Principal Dr. Savita Sonali, uh, HOD CSC and Dean Academic uh, Girish, Dean Exams Dr. B. Sripati, IQST Convener Dr. Virgangadhar Swami sir, and Coordinator of uh, this talk uh, Dr. Manjunath Kondekal, uh, Professor of uh, Physics Nagras, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Shavali, uh, Anmant Rao, and other backend team. Uh, who have uh, organized this uh, today's talk. Thank you from principal office for, for regularly and continuously working on uh, organizing talks and uh, other things. Uh, uh, Chinna Madam and, uh, and backend team uh, who have organized Shiv Prasad and Shiv for for, for uh, making backend preparations for online uh, webinar. Uh, academic uh, audit process uh, is a very important uh, process uh, to, to attain uh, uh, valuable uh, outcomes, either in an uh, uh, educational institution or in uh, a professional life. Always we should uh, follow the Deming cycle. Deming cycle becomes the a important uh, uh, process. Uh, to be followed, uh, plan, do, check, 
and act that uh, we should follow in our daily work also plan what you want to do check what solutions you have choose the best solution out of it act accordingly uh, this is applicable even for your daily work also uh, deming cycle is very apt uh, for everybody to review their work and what improvement should be made in uh, coming uh, days uh, thank you for giving an opportunity uh, thank you thank you one and all uh, even anita madam thank you for, for for participating in this continue and uh, take uh, the valuable inputs from speakers uh, i think we have very good list of speakers uh, for uh, two days uh, srinivas balari is one of the, our alumni of the uh, institution and uh, 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 k n subramanya uh, principal of rvc very recently visited our institution as lic chairman and uh, kanmani b uh, hod uh, in one of the branch in bmsc et et branch uh, i think that's the only few colleges where they have maintained uh, et and uh, it branches others have closed uh, rc remet kelly uh, college bangalore and uh, gm madhu uh, very closely associated with our institution ikvc coordinator of ms ramaya i think very last maybe some six months back uh, he had delivered on top on the on quality process and the uh, dk kambli assistant advisor nac uh, i think he will also deliver very important topic how to generate uh, audit reports uh, thank you uh, iqac team uh, for getting a sponsorship congratulations also because it's a sponsored uh, event that would be organized for two days uh, our one is the venue for this uh, two days talk thank you thank you sir I, re I request dr giris h nac convener to render vote of thanks please Thank you. Good morning, all. I extend warm welcome to the people gathering. I would like to express my gratitude to all esteemed delegates of the webinar for their presence and contribution to make this webinar a great success. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I extend my gratitude to our management members. Sri H M Gurusthi Swami, Honorable President, B B Sangha, and Sri Alam Chennappa, Vice President, B B Sangha, and Chairman of this esteemed institution, and also I thank uh, Sri B B Basra, Secretary, B B Sangha, and Sri Daru Shantan, Viran Gaur, the Assistant Secretary, and Sri Gona Rajshekar Gaur, Treasurer. Thank you for providing the facilities to organize this event. I thank the our guest, Dr. K N Subramanya, the principal ROIC Bangalore, to take out the time for his busy schedule to grace this event and given the the keynote address on the on audit. I thank another guest, Dr. K R Vishnu Mahesh, yeah. assistant advisor, NAC Council, Bangalore. Sir, you are part of this event and you are highlighted the NAC process. I thank you for attend uh, the part of this event. A special thanks to Mr. Srinivas Bellari, the alumni of this college and vice president, TD Bank US, being a part of this event. I thank Dr. Kanmani, the professor and HOD, Department of ETE, the BMSC Bangalore. I thank Dr. R. C. Ramat, professor of chemistry, former principal, KLS, Nijalingappa College, Bangalore. Dr. G. M. Madhu, the professor. And IKC Director Ramay Institute of Technology, Bangalore. I thank you for attending this event. The Doctor D K Kamble, the Assistant Advisor, NAC Council, the Bangalore, for accepting the invitation as a resource person for this event. I thank you, sir. And I also thank our Principal Doctor T Anamantrati, Principal of our College, for providing immense support to make this webinar successful. I extend my gratitude to Dr. Savita Sonali, Vice Principal, for providing the support for organizing this webinar. I thank Dr. Sripati B. Dean, exam, for supporting this event. 
I congratulate and uh, thank the Dr. V. Rangadhar Swami sir, the convener IQAC cell. I thank Dr. Manjunath Pondekal, coordinator IQAC. I thank press and media and a special thanks to organizing committee, teaching and non-teaching staff for unflinching support for coordination. So our artful thanks to the participants who are participated in this event. And thank you, thank you one and all for have a great day. Thank you. I request all the participants to join today's first session with the same link. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in the first session, sir will uh, cover topics like introduction to quality assurance and accreditation, curricular aspects. Over to you, sir, Subramanya, sir. So, you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Able to hear and uh, see the slides also? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So, in order to make sure that the bandwidth is available, I am not switching on my uh, video. I will be only on audio mode. And I request uh, uh, all of you, please uh, uh, listen to my presentation. And if I got any doubts, put it in the chat box so that uh, finally I would like to answer some of the questions uh, which are relevant to the topic. Fine. Once again, uh, uh, thanking the college for giving me this opportunity to share some little thoughts, whatever I have, and uh, uh, thank the management uh, uh, for uh, organizing such a, a wonderful topic. So the topic given to me are actually I split into two. One is quality assurance and accreditation, and the other one is curricular aspects. In fact, uh, when somebody from NAC speaks, I think uh, this, if we speak now, it, it becomes uh, odd actually. Because uh, Vishnu Mahesh has already told the whole process of uh, uh, how the things have to be done if you want to apply for a NAC accreditation. And he has beautifully, in a shortest duration, has given uh, the methodology and the process to be adopted. Uh, I think I thank uh, him for that. Uh, but uh, I have my own thoughts on looking into it because as I've already told you, data could be generated only if you have a thought process and there's a process in the institution. At the last, I cannot generate any tab tables or things of that sort if I am not involved in uh, making all this happen. So I'll be working on those areas when I talk about quality assurance and uh, accreditation. And uh, I am sure uh, uh, people from uh, the host college know what I put it here. In fact, yesterday I was browsing through the website of your college and uh, I took the uh, vision and the mission of your institution. So if you look into uh, the uh, vision of your institution, uh, you are supposed to have given as a to produce professionally excellent, knowledgeable, globally competitive, socially responsible engineers and entrepreneurs is the vision you have given. And uh, in line with that, in order to meet the vision, you have given, uh, I have put it in red actually, which are very, very important. One is quality education. Other one is industry institute interaction. Other one is value system entrepreneurship skills and ethics and finally innovation and development of technologies so i am sure all of you in your institution has started started working towards quality by keeping these words in mind so if you have not done this uh, with vision and mission to my next level of quality assurance then there will be no mapping which happens in the institution because generally what happens is i have seen people put vision and mission but the activities might not have been uh, uh, linked with the vision, the mission. That's why I thought uh, I should put, put as a first slide. And uh, I'm sure many people at the top level would be knowing, but whether all the faculty members who are in the institution or really mean what is the meaning of this vision and mission is very, very important according to me. So in fact, one of our mission is quality education. In fact, uh, that word itself is so huge that if you want to achieve, 
institutions like say Harvard, uh, MIT, Stanford, all these people have taken 500 years, 300 years, 850 years, 1200 years to achieve that particular thing. So uh, quality is uh, by and large a qualitative term and uh, it depends on the, who is your benchmark uh, when you are trying to achieve the quality in education. So in that way, uh, it has got short-term goals as well as the long-term goals if you want to meet the quality in the institution. Of course, all the others are a part of the whole process of transformation of a student from a youngster to an adult who joins the institution. Uh, through all these processes, what we are supposed to develop. Some could be the technological uh, uh, developments and uh, how uh, my student can do that and other could be the total social and the personal value systems how i am going to develop these are the two main things which you should keep it in mind in this particular thing and uh, please go back to your vision and check it you have put excellent knowledgeable please remember all these words are very very powerful words actually according to me so you go back now and see your uh, organization or anybody who is participating here whoever sets a vision uh, please go back to your organization and uh, see what each word means for you in your uh, particular college and how much you have achieved. I think that is the first introspection. All of us have to do it. In fact, uh, my vision and mission statement of my college is in front of my table only. Every day once I read that because we should be always uh, looking into it. Companies like Tata's has got a vision coordinator actually. Whatever is the vision of Tata group, no? there's a coordinator who will be always looking into whether any activity process done in Tata group, whether the it is meeting the vision or art. So I think that is a fundamental thing all of us have to know. Uh, uh, if we, it doesn't match with whatever we are done here with the vision and the mission and all the activities, what happens in the institution, then I think uh, we are not uh, uh, talking in the same plane of reference. We are talking in the different plane of reference. So my sincere request to all the participants is uh, any accreditation process, auditing process, ranking system, first see what is your vision and the mission. Because people are going to look at these statements because you put it in your website, you would have put it displayed in your campus and many people to maybe in your media, magazines, everywhere it would have come. But uh, they look at when once they enter the college or when they ask the documents, they will come to know whether uh, you are in line with the vision and the mission. So my, I think uh, the people at the top, particularly the principal, the management and the heads of the department have to always focus on this vision and mission and do all the activities related to this. Then what happens is uh, automatically your process gets streamlined, your data gets streamlined. So that's how I think, uh, uh, don't take me wrong because I put this uh, just to show that in every college, this vision and mission would be there. But as long as we don't understand and do as per this, then we are going to face a problem afterwards while collecting the data. Or you say that industry institute interaction. So I will come and ask you how many industries your students have visited. I ask a student how many industries you have visited. One group of students says, sir, I have not visited anything. So then what happens is uh, it will be here, but it has not been met. So that's so. Whatever is here, let us try to meet. And uh, in fact, I don't know when you have done this mission and vision and uh, you can uh, every five years, six years, we can also revisit on the vision and the mission actually, because there, there are a lot of development which is happening in the education field, particularly in line with the new education policy. So then we can still revisit some of these things. Uh, for example, if you look into it, uh, community development is one of the important things. So where you have put the community development here, of course, social values you have put, but socially relevant uh, problem solving where it comes here. So we can uh, rethink on whatever we have already done it. So this is briefly to explain you that uh, are you in line with the vision and the mission of your institution? This is a fundamental thing all of us have to understand in the governance. So when once you do this, then uh, because whole of our planning is top down and implementation is down top. So in the planning level, the first is the mission, the vision only. Then all the other things like say goals, objectives, policies, everything is going to come. So that's why I thought I should start from here and inform you what has to be done. Of course, uh, I will not go into details of that. This is available in the NAC website anyway, but uh, I'm sure that uh, internal quality assurance uh, cell is there. I think the coordinator also met in the morning, but uh, have you looked into what exactly the NAC wants from this cell? And are we in line with these things? Because what happens is when they ask for the data uh, presentation, 
they look at all these things and based on these only those questionnaires have been designed so please look into it whether all the things which is given in order to assure the performance evaluation assessment and accreditation and quality accreditation have we met some of these things or is it there or not has to be checked and this becomes the duty of the iqsc cell i am sure in some way or the other we would have done it but uh, even the iqsc cell documents have to be very very systematically codified systematically standardized all those things have to be done then your dvv becomes very very easy so the primary task has been given i am not going to details as i already told you they have also given the strategies actually so what iqsc is supposed to do it so please go back and see what we are we are doing in our colleges and something which we are not doing because i was checking uh, when vishnu mahesh was telling all these things what documents are expecting it is there as a function of the iqsc so are we correctly doing the iqsc or is it a part time job when i don't have the academics i'll go and sit there and sometimes we meet many times we may not meet are we doing like that because this should be a continuous process there should be a small department actually who take care of these activities particularly the documentation because uh, we are somehow very very poor in documentation and uh, whenever any committee would like to visit maybe one month before that every one of us become very active but afterward the visit we again forget i think that's not happen iqsc's intention is that to so see that all the data and information are properly kept in a codified form for the different functions it could be academics it could be administration it could be finance it could be research or it could be anything related to the society or it could be anything related to your teaching learning process and your evaluation procedures have been thoroughly put and then uh, Uh, you are uh, support infrastructure and services like say security gardening uh, outsourced activities buses or the transports whatever you take how all these documents have been maintained or not is very very important and of course the research you may have very good research facilities in your institutions and how you are sharing and networking with other institutions in india and abroad so these are the strategies even though it looks to be a part of iqsc but i feel this is the whole uh, strategy should be a part of our education system in every institution of course iqsc would be consolidating all these things and putting it in one place so that's how they define the mechanisms and uh, this one and uh, you can look into the uh, things like say uh, the kind of other kind of functions which they are looking into i will not go into details it is available in uh, nac actually uh, nac website it is there please look into it in fact uh, what all the things they are given here that is what they are asking in the dvv it could be a feedback it could be the seminars organized it could be the quality related activities and how we are disseminating the best practices and how the quality culture in the institution has been spread in fact uh, in companies they say as soon as uh, in fact for iso 9000 there is a thing that somebody uh, from a let us see uh, iso 9000 auditor calls a particular phone number and if you don't lift within the three beep sounds they say there is some problem in the communication in the organization that's the way they look at in the Uh, ISO 9000 uh, uh, kind of auditing. So then uh, your auditing actually starts from, or your quality starts from the security, the way he salutes, the way he takes care of the process there, and it goes up to the kitchen. If you have got a food court or a mess, it goes up to that. So quality is totally a journey. So don't think it is giving just some documents. It has to be imbibed as a part of our uh, uh, culture. in fact it could be the personal quality as a professional quality both are very very important actually the people who maintain time who neatly dress every time there is a quality parameter there actually and people will be looking for that so it starts from our personal uh, how do you maintain our quality of hygiene the way we dress the way we speak the way we communicate it starts from there and goes and percolates to the organization so that's why how well this quality culture has been uh, imbibed in the institution is very very important it starts from the management ends with the students and your alumni everybody will know uh, from what co which college he has come the way he speaks people are going to make lot of judgments about that so quality actually is a culture don't uh, let us not take it as a one uh, uh, kind of a preparing a document giving some action plan and forgetting it is not that it should be a part of our life just like uh, uh, we sleep we get up every day i think quality should be like that 
i think uh, building this is very very important according to me as seen very very good institutions in the country that uh, as soon as you enter you will come to know about the quality culture of the institution i think that's the way we should uh, start looking into it fine so these are some of the aspects and of course uh, as i think uh, uh, vishnu uh, mahesh has beautifully enunciated the benefits i think same thing i put it here i don't want to repeat on the things whatever he has already done then of course the composition also i am sure in fact yesterday i was checking to the website and uh, it is as per the norms whatever is required and finally so giving an example but i don't know uh, whether i missed in your website or not when i was checking the college website i did not find the quality policy so maybe it is somewhere i am not sure uh, but please look into it in fact as an example i am giving in our college uh we have a set up a based on my vision and mission whatever i said as also set a quality policy so achieving excellence in technical education research and consulting through outcome based curriculum focusing on continuous improvement and innovation by benchmarking with the global best practices so when you talk about quality there is always a best practice there is always a benchmarking because it's not absolute it is relative with respect to whom you are doing well is it absolutely you are the best in the world or with respect to somebody else you are best in the world in, in, in fact in quality uh, that's what six sigma for example if they say in quality is 99.9973 percent that means you will have 3.4 parts per million as the defects in any system so like that a quality policy on what you want to do in fact this can be subdivided also i am getting a result of 80 percent i want to move next year to 85 percent next i want to move to let us say uh 95% slowly moving towards 100 that is called as continuous improvement which has got a beautiful one criteria under any of the accreditation ranking continuous improvement is very very important fine so we have categorized like this in our college academic examination and administrative and uh, uh, we have a good team who are working with this with the external members also so i thought that quality policy you may be having it but i could not find it in the website please just look into it this applies to all the college where the quality policy is not there then as a case example in our college what we do is that uh, uh, we look into all the because as uh, vishnu mahesh told there are qualitative factors as well as quantitative factors so then uh, all these are the factors wherein i should look at first i start from my admission go to the curricular development then go to the teaching learning process look into the examination reforms what i am doing uh then uh, looking to the human resources then looking to the r and d then do looking into the industry institute interaction then library ict and physical infrastructure and further etc etc your uh, external networking and things of that sort or your societal commitment or the community service whatever you do i think these are some of the parameters you can always keep it in mind when you are trying to measure quality keeping these subtitles in mind go back and see how you have improved let us say for example you take admission take last 10 years data and put it in a graph we will come to know where do you stand you take about the results so many think quantitative the iqac cell should have all these kinds of graphs and the analysis should happen as per that so that is how the quality initiatives could be always taken into consideration so i did not want to go too much into the quality and accreditation because all of you are already knowing because you have to go for the second cycle now but i thought some thoughts very important would be the vision and the mission then the quality policy and then how do you make quality as a culture in the organization this is not a easy process let me tell you whatever stage you may be if you want to the move move to the next level obviously it will take another 2 years 3 years 5 years 10 years all our colleagues are very very old don't think uh, uh, we, I, we have completed uh, around uh, uh, we started in 1963 so i have completed only 58 to 60 years but uh, we are trying to compare ourselves with uh, uh, let us say harvard which is 1200 degree cambridge uh, 1200 years and cambridge which is 850 years so there is a long journey in fact even our generation itself may not be there when we look into the growth of our organization in the future i think that's a kind of goal vision we have to set for our next generation i think that should be kept in mind uh, when uh, uh, people talk about it see generally what happens is i, I got a very interesting example for this all of you know subrato bakchi was uh, uh, in the mind trick i think it was started by him in fact uh, he has given a beautiful example in one of the books whatever is written as a preface what is to happen is his father was working in a uh, job where it was transferable and they used to go in a particular it was a central government job and they used to go and uh, uh, be in the, some uh, house in a particular place 
and his mother was uh, actually very fond of putting the plants and growing it but while the time she puts a plants and grows it three years is over they will get transferred to the other place so then subroto bachi one day asked his mother that uh, uh, mother why you are putting all these things anyway you are not enjoying you know the word she said was whatever i do today is not for me it's for the next generation i think uh, that is the message all of us should have we should not look at very very short term nature okay something is coming here today come and finish off it's not that quality is a total journey according to me i feel all of us have to work towards that our next generation next generation should enjoy their way they are leading their life i think that's the way we should try to create the whole environment of the quality in fact uh, uh, in mind tree there is one uh, role called as a gardener gardener is the role uh, which is they, they call a mentor is a gardener in mind tree which was started by subroto bakchi so like that uh, this is what is a message i want to give to all of you let us not take it as a routine exercise of putting some papers putting some calculations it's not that it has to be imbibed then let me tell you all your measures what you are expecting it should be much more than what is expected by the agencies so i hope i have conveyed the message with respect to quality whatever i want to inform you and i let me stop here and if somebody has got any question related to this you can ask otherwise i'll go to the next topic one or two question you can ask in the chat box so that uh, i can answer otherwise i can move into the next one delete the chat box okay uh, no more questions no questions here i did not find anything in the chat box i think uh, one more aspect we should always try to look into is that uh, uh, they say that uh, a socrates says that uncriticized life is not worth living he says that questioning should be a habit in fact it is going to create a lot of scientific temper in people so please start asking questions it let it be a simplest question it doesn't matter let it be a foolish question it doesn't matter but we should start asking questions because we also tell no that the student doesn't ask questions in the uh, class but i also find in many of the seminars even faculty don't ask the questions so you should start asking the questions because learning will be very good if you start asking question getting the solution and uh, i i don't believe that whatever i say is 100% right somebody may have a better view of these things you can also share actually your thoughts when such uh, seminars are organized so that it will be a mutual learning don't think it will be a one way communication always it could be a mutual learning also so this is the first part so the next part is a curricular aspects so i i am sure that whole of your uh, uh, the program has been slated with criteria 1 to criteria 7 and criteria 1 being the curricular aspects which is very 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 important i am sure already you would have seen what all the subtitles under that and what should be filled what documents should be done under that i'm sure many people already the information is available on all those things okay but my focus would be a little bit different in these things because if you don't do a total preparatory work for the curriculum then uh, what you are going to fill there is my question so there should be a long term preparatory work has to happen now what is going to happen is you have set a vision you have set a mission you set a quality policy you set a goals for you next comes the curricular aspects or the curriculum design which is very very important so i am sure that uh, uh, these slides all of you know if you take curricular aspect there are four sub topics under that first one is curriculum design and development uh, in case of a autonomous and the universities they only design if are an affiliated system it's only curriculum planning and the implementation because uh, Uh, affiliated system or constituent colleges so it is done by the affiliated university that's why if you look into even the criteria for example for me i am an autonomous college and i had to answer for 150 marks whereas you will be affiliated college people would be answering for 100 marks so there is academic flexibility curriculum enrichment and the feedback system so this covers the whole of the curriculum design and the development and of course uh, under 1.1 if you again come and go into the details 1.1.1 which is very very important let me tell you according to me if you answer this question correctly 
maybe all other 1.2 1.3 1.4 you have already have the answers with you but what happens is this first exercise we are not doing it correctly if you are doing it correctly try to fine tune further let us say curricula is developed adapted have relevance to the local national regional global developmental needs with the learning objectives including pos psos cos of all beautifully put it actually i think this total is even the essence of nba also so uh, can can anybody tell me that what all the relevance you are looking into first because if you want to set a curriculum right kind of a curriculum i feel the first is you, because whole of our education is inward looking we have to become outward looking that means we are looking studying here and going back to the society trying to apply instead of that go back to the society first try to get all the details from there then try to set your curriculum then yours will be the best curriculum according to me so all these points you know covering all these points of uh, curriculum enrichment again if you know what all the relevance of the national uh, the global requirement your enrichment will automatically happen if you don't know what is needed for example vishnu murthy had put one slide actually on sustainable development goals there are 17 goals which is given by the united nations i don't know if anybody watch he put education uh, which is the fourth goal so have you looking into this when you are following the curriculum i don't know how many of us are looking into it so curriculum enrichment will automatically happen when you look at the uh, needs of the society needs of the industry if you don't look into this our syllabus will not be up to date i think there's a complaint from the industries that uh, whatever they study here whatever they do in the company it doesn't match it is just because when you are formulating our curriculum we are not looking into the needs in the society i think now a time has come this is the main difference we find between our system of education and the western system of education they first look into the social problem they look into the industrial problems come back and try to set the curriculum we are good in something i am not saying everything is bad here we are good in something with respect to the knowledge and things of that sort but today's need in the society either the local need or the international need or a global that is a glo global and the local need would be something different so in that way if we can do the first 1.1.1 .1 correctly let me tell you all the other things your academic flexibility curriculum enrichment is automatically taken care of. and if you do the first 1.1.2 1.3 .1 very well then let us not bother about 1.4 because always what happens is without doing 1.1 1.2 1.3 1 correctly then we want students to give us a good feedback how is it possible is not possible 1.4 actually we should not even talk now until you go up to 1.1 1.2 1.3 out of that again 1.1 is very very important according to me if we can do this correctly 1.2 and 1.3 are the succeeding steps for uh, achieving the curricular aspects so i will be focusing on that 1.1 only today okay i can tell you a uh, lot of changes have happened in the whole of the education system i would like to focus on that so that uh, other factors could be automatically you can only derive from your side based on where you are located uh, which state you are there which town you are there which city you are there you can do it and i am sure that the whole focus today in the world is the outcome based education in particular in india the focus is on the outcome based education please always keep this in mind what is the outcome a student is supposed to learn when he studies a one unit in a course or total course or a group of courses or when he does a project what is the outcome you are expecting and things of that sort so make sure that this flow in fact if you look into all these things whatever is happening slowly the curriculum we are doing it but learning and teaching we are trying to actually club the our traditional way with the outcome based actually that is where a lot of confusion is still there but still we are not coming with the outcome based assessment the new national education policy is focusing on assessment and evaluation in a better way now hope maybe in another 6 months to 1 year you'll have all these things would be in place uh, because everybody in our state is supposed to implement from this year only the national education policy so in that way outcome based education is going to be uh, take a, a different shape altogether in whatever the way we have understood with the mechanical education system or the traditional education system so this is the one which all of us have to understand in the beginning and uh, according to me whatever you remember uh, in whole of my slides today i have 43 slides but i want all of you to remember this slide correctly i'll spend 5 to 6 minutes only on this slide now so what is the uh, glo global the local needs let us go back to the left side 
<coughs> that is industry 4.0 are we teaching what all the courses we are teaching which are relevant to industry 4.0 either it could be the human and the machine which is robotics area or it could be cyber physical systems which is called as the industrial iot are we teaching uh, uh, something like say analytics are we teaching uh, let us say uh, things related to the augmented reality blockchain technology cyber security etc etc what all the courses we are teaching maybe in many college they'll say okay i have got as an elective but actually the elective only few people will take not all the students will take because these are the kind of skills which is expected in industry 4.0 from all the students who join the companies it is not only few people who take the elective so in that way what all the things we are going to look at in fact when we are still uh, everybody is focusing on industry 4.0 already germans and other developed countries have done industry 5.0 see we talk about robots correct but they already talk about cobots cobots means collaborative robots that means human and a robot have to work together in the future how do you integrate the human with a robot is the industry 5.0 in particular so what all the kinds of courses how many of us have got a simple robot in our colleges how many have got good cnc machines in the colleges how students can understand okay you need not have to have but how many students go and see companies like fanuc company like toyota company like hyundai honda where whole of the sections there is only operated by robots whole section you go to welding section there is a robot you go to assembly section there is a robot group of robots and things of that sort so people are expecting as soon as he completes engineering we are supposed to know all these things so this is the first outward looking that the industry need is this that means 4.0 5.0 are you teaching the students in the college so your curriculum should come of in fact uh, everybody says me that sir i am an affiliated college vtu does the syllabus we don't have any role to play but i am sure that syllabus is done by people only you are also or your friends are all the part of uh, all these things please go on sending letters to these bos uh, in the university somewhere somebody will take all these things and try to uh, accumulate all these things and try to put it in the form of a syllabus so that is one part which is outward looking next coming back to i am sure all of you know ka di what are all these things these are the program outcomes which has been specified as per the nba i am sure that all of you know about this but how much of syllabus the mapping we are doing with this pos is very very important see something we may put and try to put it but actually students should have learned all these things have you looking into this so this is another so which is uh, i have industry 5.0 4.0 putting up with my pos if i put it in the pos it goes to cos that means i am going to teach a course if i don't teach a course i will teach some assignments some seminars some mini projects main projects internships what not and at the end of four years i should be in a position to meet all these pos correctly for a student then his employability becomes very easy do you think employability is simply they will get it there is on the right side there is something called as now people expect a 21st century skills even in the national education policy there are two things which are been mentioned so many times one is the 21st century skills for engineers and the bottom one which is the sustainable development goals 17 sustainable development goals these are the two things which have to keep in mind when we are uh, formulating the curriculum we might have done certain portions in this i don't say we are at zero level but now it has to be done very quickly it has to be imparted to the students so that they are employable in a better way so these two things which is put on the right hand side are the need of the national education policy industry so one is a industry requirement 21st century skills for engineers other one is a societal requirement united nations has set up this for the world based on this even the country has set it for that based on this even the state karnataka state has set this and there is a sustainability department who are trying to take care of all those things so how we are trying to educate our uh, engineers on all those things have you put any course related to this or a group of courses or is he doing some assignment is he doing some uh, case study has he visited some industries based on this has he done any mini projects has he done some internship and all those things please take care of all those things if you look into this automatically your curriculum becomes very good and uh, the feedback and whatever you are talking about will be automatically right then the leftmost bottom corner all of you know what is this 
bloom's taxonomy so my bloom's taxonomy is fundamentally related to my academics and evaluation i am sure the next speakers would be taking care of that in the teaching learning and the evaluation process but bloom's taxonomy because whole of our examination system is only first two levels only few papers is only third level but the last three levels i think there is a long way to go few students in the college may do as a part of the project but the majority of them will not be uh, because this is again related to your uh, learning uh, 21st century skills this is related to your uh, pivos this is related to the industry requirements this is related to sustainable development goals so bloom's taxonomy is beautifully done actually if somebody can map all these things education 5.0 what has happened now there is a, a corona has uh, taught us lot of things actually and uh, but for corona we would not have done lot of things like say it could be online learning or it could be the blended mode the way people had to set the question paper the way they had to conduct the quizzes the way they had to make the videos the way they had to make the different tools which are available so education 5.4 point we are operating with 4.0 as of now 4.0 is nothing but digitalization of education whereas 5.0 expects uh, your student should be a global citizen or a global employee multinational company should also be in a position to take your our students not for indian jobs for other see why only uh, uh, a student studying here is working in google in bangalore why uh, my student cannot work in google america i think that's a focus uh, people are looking at so education 5.0 looks at too much of globalization and see how your people are employed here where your students are employed and looking into the global kind of a uh, scenario so i am sure this slide is very very important if somebody wants to set up the curriculum if you don't set based on these things then uh, what we saw previously curriculum developed adopted have relevance to the local national this we are not met at all let me tell you so the first that's why i am focusing more on that you may have pivo sir but when once you don't study these things how do you set your pivots is not possible so that's why i will be focusing only on that so based on this for every course can you make a chart like this maybe the row wise of top one is pivots all your 12 pivots then uh, column wise i have taken your uh, one course i have taken here actually uh, co1 to co4 course outcomes then industry 5.125 what is expects education 5.125 what is expects then uh, skills 21st century skills there are 12 skills then sustainable development goal 17 then can you map all with your pivots and the cvos in fact whatever is blinking here we have already started this in our college uh, for the new syllabus whatever is blinking this is done for chemistry actually so we have started with first year and a group of faculty have involved in making this slide for chemistry so you tell me now Uh, will your syllabus will not be good will your curricular the focus will not be good on all those things definitely it will be very good fine so i want uh, this slide and the previous slide is very very important for the curricular aspects if we don't take care of this curricular aspects correctly then whatever kind of syllabus you do it may not be right fine i'll be telling some innovative ways to take care in order to enhance your curricular aspects other one is the blended learning already UGC has told that from this year or next year onwards, up to forty percent we can go for online learning. Whatever the growth we have about online learning is going to become a new normal in the future. All of us have to get you to it. So on the right side I put the total online, on the left side I put uh, the offline. What are the things you used to do in the offline mode? In between becomes a blended learning. That means a student is supposed to do both the online and the offline combination. so you tell me now what all the ways you are doing online how many of your students look into the tedx talks excellent talks would be there how many of your students are working in moodle platform virtual labs geopardy labs youtube lectures which are available think pair share game based learning all these things are already available actually i am sure some of you will be definitely doing all this in your uh, uh, institutions but try to institutionalize that what happens here is that uh, some uh, people two to three faculty in computer science department will be doing something some electronics faculty will be doing something else but if you ask as a whole college what you are doing what electronics people are doing computer science people will not know what computer science is doing mechanical will not not at all no so in that way uh, what i feel is this is what i call as a culture culture of the organization how do you institutionalize all these things 
the planning has to come from the uh, principal, then to the HODs, then the group of people, then it has to be percolated. Planning will be always top down. Implementation will be down top. What are the best practices one department has? Please try to take it to the others. Then things are going to become very, very easy. And of course, on the other hand, uh, engineering is all doing. Seeing is believing. So in that way, I don't say that the whole online will be working out. That's why UGC is also very careful. They've gone up to 40% maximum. So I feel still 40%, 60% offline will provide a better uh, kind of a uh, learning for the student. So other is a blended learning, we have to look into it. I'm sure many of you know these platforms, what is already available for online conduction, learning management tools, screen recorders, innovative tools, and the online assessment tools. Please look into all these things, it's all available. And uh, majority of these things are free also, which is available. For example, Geopardy Lab is very good. In fact, in our college, my faculty use all these things in different departments. Uh, for example, Socrates learning is a beautiful way of uh, making a group exercise. Then uh, another thing could be, uh, what all the other like TEDx talks. In fact, uh, we are all make, since we are autonomous, many of these things we are making compulsory as a part of their assignments and seminars. And the March is also given for people who participate in all those things. So this is related to your online learning tools, which will be the order of the day. So when you are designing the curriculum, uh, even already our vice chancellor the other day when you are speaking, he was telling, let's say you are teaching for four hours in a class. Out of that, one hour could be online. Or two hours could be online, two hours could be offline classes. For every course, it could be there. When you are doing it, then can you know into online, one hour online class, what I'm teaching for a course? What all these tools I'm trying to use? You are supposed to give that in the lesson plan. You are supposed to give in the module wise. Students should know in advance in all these things, what are the things he's trying to make use of it. So in that way, blended learning, have you linked with your curriculum? If you're not done, again, that 1.1.1 of meeting the curricular aspects would not be there. Experiential learning is another very, very important thing. Doing by hand. So you have so many things in the experiential learning. It could be core segmented methods, innovative methods, industry institu institution symbiosis, liberal education, co-curricular activities. In fact, in our college, I have identified personally 50 methods of experiential learning. In four years, if a student can learn through these 50 methods, automatically his learning will be excellent, actually. His learning would be excellent. You get a feedback for good feedback for the college. Then you need to separately worry about the curriculum enrichment, according to me, because all the things what has to be enriched for the curriculum is taken care through this experiential learning. So it's very interesting, but the faculty's role, the preparation of the faculty is very, very important when you want to do all those things. Of course, I'm not the design thinking approach is one of the ways actually which people have started. We have a two credit course in our college. If anybody wants to solve a problem, uh, looking into the curriculum design of a two credit, what you want to do, you can use a design thinking approach <coughs> for solving any kind of a problem actually. Fine. So we already have this in the college for two credit course and we want to enhance uh, to another two credits in the next semester. Then you can also have these kinds of a approach. Design thinking we have in the second year, mini project in the third year and major project in the final year. Can I link all these things for a group of students? Or you may have as instead of design thinking like you may, because you say you're an affiliated system, some of you, you may have some assignments. Can you link these assignments to the mini project to the main project? In my college, I got 21 credits of project-based learning, product-based learning, and problem-based learning. And if you do these things, let me tell you, in the last five years, we have filed around 53 patents, 35 have been published, and five have been granted. And out of these 53 patents or 35 published, 70% of these have come through this kind of an approach in the college. Lot of undergraduate students are involved in making this uh, uh, patenting. Four months work of a good project can lead to a patent actually. I think there's a capacity of your youth actually, but somehow uh, we always are in the problem space. We are not in the solution space. We always try to find fault with the student. 45 hours a faculty teaches, and at the end of 45 hours, student is also unhappy. Teacher is also unhappy. Student says, I did not understand. Faculty says, he did not come to the class. He did not pay attention. So somewhere, there's always a blame game between the two. If you want to stop that, in fact, in my college from the next year, we are introducing, if a faculty is teaching 45 hours, I don't want to teach them for 45 hours. I wanted to teach them for 20 hours, another 25 hours in the class only, you have to work along with the students. 
that is the experience you have to give it to them the group or the collaboration all these things will make a learning in a better way only one conventional way of whatever i am doing now a one way communication this has gone this has gone across the world actually it's not there so involving students in doing uh, anything whatever he wants to learn is always a better way and i feel this exercise can also lead to an incubation center it can also lead to a startup so please think over i am throwing out some innovative ways of looking into your curriculum so if you looking into this then automatically why do you worry about feedback or oh, this student did not give a correct feedback or uh, he is given me bad all those things will not be there so the negative frame of mind is going to go away according to me so in that way please look into wherever possible whether is affiliated system autonomous or in university i am sure that if you put our mind in every system we can try to make all these things then one thing which is missed when you are setting a curriculum for an engineering faculty uh, uh, specifically is that they don't have a knowledge on the business sectors there is a biggest complaint from the industries he doesn't know if i let us say he is uh, working in intel electronic students will not know what are the semiconductor companies who are the competitors then uh, what are the functions which are there in that company you ask a mechanical engineering student uh, how a toyota company works what are the things which happen in the business function ask them what are the various functions of businesses like say finance quality operations maintenance then strategic management because he is focused only on the technical some part in that so uh, wherever possible in your curriculum try to include the business sectors also for example if you are an electronics uh, engineer you can put into semiconductor industry telecommunication industry i'll tell you a simple assignment which you can give bangalore has got 7500 startups you tell can you tell me 5g startups try to find out out of this give an assignment to a student and you try to list all the 5g startups in bangalore it will be definitely more than 50 to 60 ask them to find out what all the things they are doing this should be a very good exercise for 20 marks assignment whatever we are doing it is possible and students have got their beautiful way of collecting the data they are much smarter than us because they are all tech savvy they have mobiles with them they have google with them they'll quickly do it but only problem is we are not giving them such kind of challenging task don't say i'm from a rural area i don't get the students of that cadre uh i'm from a sem- let us not uh, i think those days are gone <coughs> i always give an example michigan state university has got 60000 students if we say that we have a heterogeneity the students come from 140 countries there then what that university should talk when we say ours is only rural urban and semi urban uh, then uh, you can see the heterogeneity of 150 countries studying 60000 students so let us not give all those reasons because uh, if we uh, indians are always good at doing things there is no problem but it's only a mind frame to move in that direction and start doing it then automatically everything is going to happen according to me i hope i am making some uh, information whatever is needed then the recent one which people are talking about is how do you integrate the uh, liberal arts uh, as a part of the curriculum now we have some things but the people are not taking seriously like say we have constitution of india professional ethics we teach professional ethics but that fellow crosses the signal in the road then what we are teaching i don't understand so we should make it as a culture in every human being so in the foundation modules wherever possible you can look into discovering india because uh, in the new education policy india centric education there is a lot of focus indian knowledge system there is a lot of focus and we have to get you to all these things because uh, it is immediately going to come from this year only in the syllabus may not be in the first year but in the second third year and final year some of these courses are going to become a part of it so are we ready because nac when it comes next time nba comes next time they'll definitely ask about liberal arts courses are we ready or not if you are not ready how to make it ready is another question you may say that sir the syllabus i cannot put it you give assignments fine it is possible you give mini projects it is possible so start from that these are the foundation modules other core liberal modules are aesthetics see can you any mechanical engineer think of aesthetics as a part of the machine design we don't think we only do riveted joints welded joint design of shaft design of bearings sir but uh, when i assemble a component is aesthetics not important so why do you want to teach aesthetics as a separate subject and you say it is an architecture subject it need not be aesthetics could be a part of your <coughs> machine design itself aesthetic could be a part of your vls and embedded system 
aesthetic could be a part whoever is developing the interactive design software every where aesthetics are needed so can you make like that then his learning would be much better like the, these are some of the courses you can look into when you talk about the core liberal arts for example diversity of race you i am not talking about to talk about uh, the categorization of the race because anthropology anthropometry machine design product design are straight away linked actually if you study anthropology study the mankind correctly measurement of a that is anthropometry is very very important for somebody studying in the designing of a product because you sit in a car correct sit in the maruti car sit in the ambassador car sit in the mercedes benz car sit in the innova car you know the difference how the design has been made it depends on the human beings the kind of uh, comfort you are going to provide for which you need the anthropometric data so can you integrate this liberal arts with the technology or the technical courses rather than studying individually if you study individually that fellow studies as a subject and forgets like your uh, entrepreneurship subject and then uh, ipr constitution of india english kannada everything is studying as a separate subject for one day and passing the exam but we are not trying to link that with the technology so my sincere request to all of you is that please try to link with some of the courses whatever you are doing then the higher level electives can also be offered in the liberal arts cognitive psychology is very very important if somebody is talking about a machine learning artificial intelligence autonomous vehicles cognitive psychology is very very important sociology some people are interested to go for higher studies uh, take kpsc examination upsc examination all international relations all such things should be very important then archaeology if i want to know the indian knowledge system how my whole villages were there i'll give a simple example in uh, this year's induction program uh, we conducted a beautiful exercise for all my 500 uh, 1000 students what this was done by my senior students what they did was uh, this was all online anyway so then they did something called as a heritage walk in the afternoon for 2 hours it is an activity so what they did was where which are place they are there they asked the students to go to their uh, uh, in their own places which are some historical places a temple or the history of the town you visit all the places make a record of it and then make it into a video and present it thousand students have done it please believe me thousand students have done it you can know the kind of knowledge base we have about those towns or villages or because a person who resides there has more knowledge about a particular place so uh, we, we also gave a three best places out of thousand actually one girl from telecommunication had done about nandiyala temples excellent she had done see what i am doing that through that her communication improves because she has to do the uh, talk then her video and photography abilities will improve because she has to give beautiful things then she should know about the land so many things will be automatically learned this is what people are expecting in liberal arts it is not that everybody becomes a sports person everybody becomes a music lover it's not that but in what walk of life in our professional life how can you integrate all these things is the one which people are looking for so this will be the in thing in the new education policy and we all can be the leaders if we start looking into this and slowly in another one or two years many of these subjects are going to become a part of our uh, curriculum itself so you can start thinking on these lines now itself uh, uh, please don't take me wrong i am sure i am talking only about curricular aspects correct the but i innovate what you are supposed to do so that the learning becomes very very important of course industry institute interaction for project making a bvs member taking the input from the people then conducting the certification courses these are all the enrichment courses uh, if you link with the industry it is going to happen setting up the center of excellence center of competences <coughs> then uh, making them a part of the whole of the things because today even industry is also as a part of csr wants to do a lot for the institution in fact in my college they have given so many engines so many vehicles so many equipments also have come there so this will also add to your academic enrichment and if you put it as a part of the curriculum then student learning would be much better maybe you have 45 hours why can't you think 5 hours in each course is taught by industry expert in that area now what is happening is industry experts are coming to the colleges to give some general talks or some latest technology but uh, in our college we have already started somebody is teaching digital signal processing i say see which is the company who are good in that ask the people to come and take one unit in that or give the application of that particular course if you do like this the integration with the industries is going to add lot of value that's what even uh, 
whole of the new education policy is looking at so hope uh, we'll uh, some day or the other we'll look into it of course entrepreneurship is a culture uh, this is also uh, you call it as enrichment you call it as an outcome you call it uh, make him uh, independent whatever is the way i'm sure many colleges will also have entrepreneurship but uh, make it in still in a different way in whatever we are doing then we can definitely look into it of course the finally comes a research and innovation what people are talking about go from down top <coughs> we have a thick walls correct we have something called as a uh, let us say mechanical department electronics department all thick walls we have put that is a silos we are working but what people are expecting now multidisciplinary interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary this is the way we should start moving it and if you move in this direction your curriculum will be very good uh, in fact in our college we have a policy that in the final year project a student from uh, electronics student from computer student from mechanical can do a project it is possible and they have got beautiful results because whole is greater than sum of the parts synergistic approach interdisciplinary nature will definitely let us not go on asking the questions because these have been proved across the world that the heterogeneous teams uh, will yield better results than the homogeneous teams all indians put together in one group winning versus a japanese a chinese a indian and an american put in one group check the results it is already there ipl could be one example ipl versus the traditional 50 overs match what you see you see the kind of enthusiasm the kind of spirit the people learn from each other kohli learns from uh, uh, devilliers devilliers learn from somebody else so that is what people are looking for if you can try to create this environment in the college itself when they go to the company they'll try to replicate then we can do good products processes and the systems interdisciplinary nature is very very important because i keep talking to many people they say that no if you make too much interdisciplinary uh, then uh, my own courses will go away actually nothing happens like that one will augment the other according to me uh, can you talk about this person uh, can you see the areas what he has worked with pioneered the investigation of radio and microwave optics made very significant contribution to the plant sciences and laid foundation for the experimental science so do you need uh, uh, any examples other than this there are so many people who are working in interdisciplinary talk to the top people who are working no they all say everybody should learn in a interdisciplinary way because one will be augmenting the other or will be helpful for others otherwise if i am not in a position to learn that i will always say no 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 this mechanical student should do only mechanical he is not worry about other things you take a robot today there is all the branches of engineering you take a uh, cnc machine there is more electronics than mechanical you take a car today either a higher end cars 70% is electronics and 30% is mechanical so already lot of interdisciplinary natures are there in the products but if we don't tune our students to that through our curriculum then we'll be doing an injustice to the students who will be joining our colleges then of course i'll not go into this some of the areas which you can look into when you are uh, enriching when you are trying to put more curriculum could be on 5g technology cloud computing mesh computing then natural language processing artificial intelligence then machine vision context aware computing internet technologies then iot simulation and modeling technologies gamification concepts 3d printings then all kinds of handheld devices wearable technologies volumetric screens gesture recognition pico projector these are the products which uh, i am sure already some things are there in the market we are already using it can you ask our students to know how to make all the things he will not know because we are not put it as a part of the curriculum some some of these higher technologies are very costly you can try to link up with the industry and take their help is one initially some of these things you can introduce as an elective then make it into the core develop a skill based lab develop the knowledge over that give a lot of time to the faculty members and things of that sort other areas are digital identity big data analytics modular computers computational photography photonics quantum computing neuroinformatics see the kind of subjects which are coming i think all our indian students should be in a position to contribute in all these areas already many of these products have come to the market but i don't think major the institutions have put any anywhere near to the part of a curriculum it's not all there except some analytics now people have started looking in but all the other areas there's a lot of scope there are a lot of training which is needed to do all those things and then uh, if you look into scaling up of the skills is important 
<coughs> join with industries we have three of such natures in our college mercedes benz certification toyota kirloskar tata technologies ready engineer program some of these things will be helpful for augmenting uh, for the skill development of course project based learning is another thing which i talked about and uh, finally i know there is always a restriction from everybody that uh, you are supposed to study when you are doing the curriculum design take care of the basic sciences engineering sciences professional core and see even still keeping all these uh, restrictions on the credits because from uh, this year onwards it may become 160 credits also now there will be a fight among the faculty oh my subject will go away so i think we should not fight like that we should try to see how to augment one with the other and make it more interdisciplinary so that the student learning would be much better so this is uh, the framework of uh, combined uh, bos with the statutory bodies do the curriculum framework so these are the procedural aspects i'm sure every college is following this okay but i was more interested in what the left side correct vision mission po po pso this is very weak point in many places okay other side is taking from all the technologies the requirements of the society requirement of the employers these two are very important other than whatever is on the uh, vertical line all of us are doing it but what is joining horizontally through that is very very important i think that's what i try to focus then the total mapping happens you have a po you have a co <clears throat> how do you attain a co cos could be attained through experiential learning liberal arts assignments projects then add all the things then automatically your course attainment would be much better now what is happening is your course outcome <laughs> attainment is not so good because the learning part which is missed there actually if you miss the learning part your attainment will not yield any results so then this total mapping uh, you can always look in i am sure that many of you as a part of nba or nac would be doing all these things then connecting the dots is very important <coughs> this slide is very important for me again developing critical thinking skills and incorporating liberal arts as a part of the curriculum designing focused hackathons macathons ideathons coffee hours with students cso speaks encouraging virtual internships research based learning meta cognitive skills creating online courses then adopting inquiry based learning technology driven decisions think pair share learning involve professors of eminence synchronous peer learning making education contextual whatever is in the new york traffic will not work in the silk board junction silk board junction problems are different hebbal flyover problems are different then krishnarajpuram uh, flyover problems are different so i cannot straight away copy that and put it here your education should be more contextual need of the hour what is there here experiential than using the indigenous wisdom and the technology because our forefathers people say that takshashila nalanda all such universities it is all totally skill based experience based maybe in the last 500 years we met our last lot of things but it is just like a gold just polish it it is all there in our dna it is all there with us it not like that go away let us try to help the students in learning all these things make is make use of the indigenous wisdom which is available and teaching and learning is not just through online it could be through head heart and mind we have to put in all these effort for students learning in a better way then ai could also be used in learning process and online assessments there is a need to have digital strategy whole kind of a hybrid learning is going to come so how well we are prepared for the digital learning is very important it could be starting from your total telecommunication network bandwidth issues software issues then the different platforms which platform to make use of it for what purpose what platform all these should be a digital strategy in the institution and enhancing the industry connect then the interdisciplinary research and the fact consulting if you want to achieve all those things faculty training is very very important this slide is again important for all the faculty please introspect let us including me let us all introspect what all these skills competencies i have with me i may have a domain expertise but i am not done a application but i am not involved i am a good teacher but i am not done training programs for the others professionalism and work ethics definitely would be there but uh, what is this we should try to understand things in a better way <clears throat> then am i involved in solving myself in a critical thinking uh, or a problem solving then how is my communication all these things are the competencies every 6 months you put a rubrics you put a metrics and try to measure in fact i do this every month for myself is not to please somebody it because these are the skills which are expected how good we are in business skills see if i am not good in business skills i will not translate that to the students student may know better business skills than me <coughs> 
interpersonal skills, analytical skills, and things of that. So I feel these are all the faculty competencies which are needed if you want to set a good curriculum. Fine. Finally, the expected outcomes out of all the seven criteria put together. I don't say just the curriculum itself. Teaching learning process, continuous improvement, your support services, governance. Everything is going to add a value, including all the things. The final expected outcome from our uh, engineering education is that employment potential should improve. Better accreditation and ranking at national, international levels. <clears throat> Holistic education rather than education in silos for better living, not just getting a job. Better living. Enhancing publications, patents, building incubation center and startups, deliverables, contributing to sustainable growth of the nation, inculcating nationalistic spirit, which is very very important. Nationalistic spirit, because you talk about Atmanirbhar Bharat, and if he doesn't have that spirit of nationalism, then he will be always looking at some other products. So to make India as an international knowledge hub and a superpower, I think this is the long-term goal which every institution can set up for, let us say, five years to ten years. But what are the smaller ways? I have told as a short-term goals, we can start like looking into it. I think these are some of my thoughts. I don't know. I served my purpose of curricular aspects, but I wanted to give a overall picture to all of you that just to be just doing a curriculum, taking from somewhere, or taking some from university, putting it will not serve the purpose. Based on the requirement of the land, we are supposed to do a lot of such studies. A preparatory work has to be done before formulating a good curriculum. If you do this, see them and see measure your performances automatically it will be very good because you'll all become very active now. <coughs> so these are my some of my thoughts. I taken four minutes extra. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, hope I convey some message to all of you and uh, maybe the future speakers will go into some of the details in all these areas and try to. Uh, make a uh, please to, uh, try to learn whatever is possible and try to start implementing it because we are very good in uh, listening but at some point of time uh, we may not implement it so then it will not serve the purpose but after five days your work is going to start according to me i hope i have made some uh, uh, information or uh, some sense in my speech in uh, whatever uh, one one hour 10 minutes whatever is given to me <clears throat> so thank you very much once again to the management principal and the NAC office for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts. Now let me take some questions if they are there so that uh, whatever is possible I can uh, try to answer or try to learn from you. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, uh, 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 Subramaniam sir. Yes. Uh, I'm very thankful for your uh, excellent speech and uh, enlightening your uh, uh, total knowledge uh, on uh, quality issues to our uh, participants uh, uh, from the Department of uh, uh, Internal Quality Assurance Cell, Rao Badurwai Mahabalishwara Engineering College. We really extend our uh, thanks uh, to you. We are very privileged uh, to listen your words, uh, uh, valuable words, sir. Uh, <coughs> let me uh, take a few questions uh, from participants. Uh, sir is ready. If uh, anybody wants to put, you can put first in a chat uh, so that if you still you want to communicate with the sermons, we will open uh, the uh, mic. Chat, Lydia. So a few questions are there in chat. Yeah. Ramesh, chat questions. <coughs> <coughs> Sir, does foreign universities uh, set high standards when compared to us? Uh, foreign university standards are high when compared to us. Uh, sir, actually, let me tell you, um, it is not the question of setting standards. Yeah. Thing is, uh, if I take a digital signal processing, a professor here as well as there both have to teach. Correct? Same subject only. Uh -huh. Whatever is latest. So in that way, but the thing is, uh, see, what you teach will not change, but how do you teach is going to change. I think that is where the difference is there. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Our modes of delivery, the way we use experiential learning, the way we teach in the class, the way we make a blend of the online and the offline learning, the way we prepare videos, uh -huh. all such things are the difference according to me. It's not just the standards alone. In fact, uh -huh. uh, some of our Indian teachers who do all these things teach much better than even the foreign professors also. Uh -huh. So in that way, it's not the high standards, but the way we do things has to be changed. Right, right sir. This I think uh, question is asked by Professor Aparna Vastrad, Madam, uh, Computer Science Professor in uh, 
ಬಳ್ಳಾರಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಸರ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಇಫ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಅಪರ್ಣ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಓಕೆ ರೈಟ್ ಹಲೋ ಸರ್ ಯಾ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಸರ್ sir uh, somewhere uh, we usually we indians have the tendency that uh, foreign people working in foreign uh, are uh, recognized more does the education policy believes that or in that way in that aspect i uh, actually asked this question uh, okay. somewhere it was told google uh, google bangalore and google bangalore our student to focus uh, for google america so i was thinking when globalization comes almost every everything is covered across the globe same concepts or whatever it is so in that aspect i asked whether foreigners are more good in their education approach <coughs> no i don't think madam i see we should not have that first of all that feeling itself see it's a perception of the individuals do you know people who have all studied in india in 1970s in iits iits are only working as professors in the foreign universities fine that is point number 1 point number 2 do you know that how many of our indian professors are excellent faculty members who go and teach in foreign universities it is possible for every one of us but only thing is we restrict everything we are so much uh, uh, what is uh, say self contented at very early stage then we don't even think on these lines according to me there's only a perception if you start today in another 5 years you can also become a world class teacher there's no doubt in that thank you sir thank you very much thank you any any other questions uh, participants can uh, post in the chat sir is uh, ready to uh, take up okay uh, sir uh, uh, i think uh, uh, we have got uh, all the things uh, till now uh, i, I think uh, if uh, there are no questions means there one is i have confused everybody or i have understood everything <laughs> so i don't know which category it comes no, excellent presentation sir uh, all the almost all the uh, issues are discussed very well and uh, definitely we got uh, very good information from you uh, that's what experience uh, matters uh, you know how to present it uh, a particular matter and information to reach uh, the audience it's so very excellent sir in chat also people have put uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, excellent uh, program and all uh, I, I, once again sir uh, from internal quality assurance cell rym engineering college uh, i dr virgangadhar swami uh, iqc convener uh, thank you uh, for your presentation and uh, giving so much uh, given so much of time for us today in your busy schedule also uh, yeah. we got a uh, very good information from you sir Uh, thank you once again sir and uh, 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 we need the same cooperation in future also sir uh, definitely definitely i'll be very very happy to associate and uh, help the people who wants to learn thank you so sir in fact i also request uh, if anybody would like to work with our faculty members in our college we are very open actually we work with many people in yeah. fact i have uh, mois with more than 25 to 30 institutions in the country so yes. if anybody would like to work with us in your yeah. related areas then we can always work because it is a collaboration is very very important nowadays yes sir yes sir thank you sir thank you very much thank for you. namaste offer. to all of you and uh, have a nice five days learning and start implementing up from next week itself whatever you learn in this week thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you for your uh, time sir thank you thank you uh, i request all the participants uh, to fill the feedback of this session uh, and uh, please uh, join <laughs> at uh, 150 for the afternoon session and attendance is compulsory to get the certificate and all sessions feedbacks uh, uh, we need to take it up and send to the nac uh, thank you once again for all the participants for attending this session so thank you